Hello, and welcome to the Money and Banking Edition of Teacher Gifted Children Without Having to Talk to Them. I'm Mr. Doolish. I have a degree in Petroleum Engineering and landed my dream job as a teacher here at Ridgeview. In this edition, you're going to learn about, you guessed it, money and banks. You might have been given money before and been to banks, but what does this all mean? Well, follow along, and you might just avoid getting punished for asking your parents dumb questions. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do I need to know this? This is stupid. Nobody understands me or my feelings. But don't be such a narcissistic Nelly. This is some really important stuff. Pretty soon, you'll be getting a job. But where will you place all that money? In the bank, of course. By watching this video, you'll be prepared to open an account with confidence and, more importantly, money. This bank will stay with you for as long as you want, and you should know how it works. If you understand how the system works, then you'll be a good, hard-working American citizen. Money, money. Before we begin talking about banks, you kids need to know about this. Now, I'm pretty sure you already noticed, but this is money. Money can be the money your parents carry around, but did you also know that anything you trade can also be called money? I don't get what you're saying, Mr. Doobles. I thought you might say that, you stupid kid. Well, I've just shown you kids paper money, but the things you trade can also be called money. Remember being a big dummy and trading your red eyes black dragon for Karibo at school because you thought you were the best? Those cards can be thought of as money. Remember your parents giving you $5 to buy a big Carl? I don't because they are never that cheap. The dragon you traded can also be called currency. Currency is anything used to pay for something. If you had given the other kid money instead of the dragon, then the money would have been considered currency. Trading things is fun, right? There's a fancy word for that. It's called bartering. My dad goes to the barter store and he comes home smelling funny and gross and mean and sometimes he hurts mommy and me and my dog Rexford. Ha ha ha. Ah. No, no, no. What you're thinking of, little boy is a bar. That's a completely different subject, which is not talked about in this video. You should probably go get some help or something. Now, trading might seem like a good idea, but nobody really knows how many Karibos are with a Red Eyes Black Dragon card. Your friend might say one, so he ends up with a much better card, and you end up with a really dumb card. You might say you want 3 or 4 Karibos for your dragon because you, for some really dumb reason, think having a lot of sucky cards will make you stronger. It all gets really confusing. This is where the money magic comes in. Money can be used as a medium of exchange. It gives you a good idea of how items compare with each other. If you see a big bag of Cheritos cost you $5, and then a big bag of Cheetos cost $3, it is easier to understand which one is cheaper. Our money is used everywhere in the good old US of A, making it easier for you and your parents to buy items when they're cheap. Money also stores value. A store of value basically means this. If you sell your Red Eyes Black Dragon card for $10 to some sucker, you will have $10 that will always be worth $10. The card might get ripped and then be less than $10, but you already have your money, so what do you care? Pillowy mounds of mashed potatoes. When you have all this money, what can you do with it? Sure, you can spend it or keep it in your pocket with your Melting Hertz chocolate candy bar. But there is a safer place to keep it, in the bank. The bank lets you do about three things. You can save your money here, take out some when you need it, or get a loan. A loan is where the bank lends you honey bunches of money to use on whatever you want. You can even use it on houses like this man. Nigga, I'm from Georgia, that's the real estate. I'm feeling like New Zealand. Charging to the... 
but you shouldn't think of loans as free money. The trick is, you have to pay more than what you borrowed. If you borrow $5, then you might have to pay the bank $7 later. I mean, come on, that's like $2, that's like a whole Cheeto bag. Right now, all American banks accept your American dollars. But did you know that banks weren't always around? Back in the 1700s, banks were run by a single person. You would give your money to one person who would keep it safe. Air quotes, you can't see them. Doesn't sound as safe as keeping your money inside a safe, does it? Later in the century, around 1789, Mr. Alexander Hamilton wanted a national bank. This national bank would be working under the national government and create a single currency for the entire nation. It would also check on other banks throughout the country. The Bank of the United States, or BUS for short, but not a short bus, was created in 1791. Hooray for the 90s, like if you're a 90s kid, like if you agree. The bus ended up breaking down, along with the second bus. If you missed the lecture on the second bus, please reinsert cassette one flipped over. You are 10 years old, you should be able to follow directions. God. The US then just kept using state banks not controlled by the government. These state banks weren't always safe and sometimes they didn't have enough gold and silver that backed the money up. People couldn't trade their money for gold or silver because there wasn't enough. Soon people just started rushing to the bank to take their money out of it because it sucked. This was called a bank run. People ran to the bank to take their money out. No, the banks did not get up and run. Now we're going to learn a little bit about how banks actually work. The next thing I'll be talking about is the Federal Reserve System, or FRS. Could, be, could stand for Foaming Raising Stink or something. This is the central bank of the nation. Think of it as your parents who would lend you money whenever you need it. The Federal Reserve System deals with its member banks. Member banks are the central bank's kids. They belong to the central bank. The member banks must put some of their money into the central bank. Time for some history. Banks used to be on a gold standard. What's that you say? Here's how it worked. Say that you and your friends wanted to use paper and crayons as money. How many papers would be equal to one crayon? This is where setting a standard comes in. You can decide to make two pieces of paper equal one crayon. Now you have set a standard for your paper. If you had 10 crayons, then 20 pieces of paper would equal the same. But you can't have more than 20 pieces of paper without getting more crayons first. Otherwise, the paper would start losing its value. This is exactly how the gold standard used to work, except with gold instead of crayons and actual paper money instead of paper. Was that a little still too confusing for you kids? Well, you don't need to worry about this. The US is not on the gold standard anymore. Gee, thanks, Obama. I mean, thanks, Nixon. Shake it, bake it, booty quick it. That's right. Roll it around. Don't take it.